are you ready for this? It's very bright. Morning everyone and welcome to this week's video. Going to drop a clip in <laughs> of a lovely special day an outing to the seaside town of Eastbourne and home to the Towner Art Gallery. Today it's Eastbourne. Little area of the beach here and then really quite big groins. This is the pier we walk towards Look at that beautiful sun. Oh, I've got to get my bag out. I don't know what's in the bag. I'm having the reveal. Oh, cake! <laughs> it's a piece of outing cake. Carrot cake. Mm. This is the Towner Art Gallery then. I've never been. Come on in. The Towner have the most fantastic website. So if you're thinking of a visit, please look at the website because you get a real flavour of what's, what, what's on exhibition. It really is superbly filmed and, 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 a, and a really lovely website to look at. This is an Edward Liddell wallpaper study and it really put me in mind of Bloomsbury, the Bloomsbury set. I turned around a little further and saw this Vanessa Bell, a beautiful painting. So we came back from the towner and I was just full of wallpaper. In our very first little cottage, oh, so many years ago, Laura Ashley had a whole Bloomsbury range of wallpaper, furnishings, fabrics, and in that little cottage, we had a Bloomsbury room. Uh, so I've always been drawn to it. I also like, I thought in contrast, I've also really liked the Lucien Day, Robin and Lucien Day designs from the 50s. And this is a great book. I've had it a long, long time. But there's, there's, there are all, lo, lo, there's so much in here. I, I'll, I'll photograph and try and zoom up. So I like the kind of that retro. I have a, I have a thing for some, some degree of retro design. I went through my bookshelves, and more recently on the shelf, I've got Shani Rhys James. I just think this is knockout, absolute knockout. She has done a whole series on wallpaper. <laughs> it particularly puts me in mind, or puts me in mind of growing up in the 70s. My parents had a thing for heavily flocked, giant wallpaper motifs and big furniture. So. I think this work is phenomenal, it's fantastic. So that's someone to look at if you're interested. Where to go from there? So thoughts have been stirred up by going to the exhibition, which is good, that's what you want. I've come back, I've done a little bit of research, I've dug around and had a look on my bookshelves. And then it's time to go to the sketchbook. I want to start seeing what might now come out from this point in time. This leads me nicely into why have a sketchbook slash art journal. I could say it's my best friend. I can moan about my art disasters. I can celebrate my art success. I can share my art ideas. It's a place to play with paint, pen and pencil. It's a place to cut things and stick things. It's a place to problem solve, a place to rest, to doodle, to just simply be. You can spend a little time or a long time. It is part of your creative kit. It gives you clues to your creative identity. I know so many people, myself included, I have spent so long trying to find my creative identity and it helps, it really does. 
So it's become a constant and it can lead the way. Basically, it's my, having a sketchbook is my connect to creativity. The how will be different for everyone. Make the sketchbook yours, own it by painting it or decorating it. And the only structure for me is to date the entry and to try to go and make an entry every day. So even that task in dating your entry is open to interpretation. You might want to particularly have an ornate date, a print stamp date, a handwritten date, a a big bold date, highlighted date. So find and do what works for you, what you like. So writing, how much, what to say. I put my feelings, how I relate to art, to the art I've been making, to why I haven't been making. In my experience, the more I write about what I'm going to do, the more likely I am to actually do it. And that is so true. The drawing and painting are sometimes the precursors to an actual painting. Sometimes they're not. I take photographs of stages of a painting and put them in the sketchbook in order to alter, make additions or subtract subtractions before going back to painting. I'll show you that in a minute. How should it look? It should look like a place where you've had the freedom to try things out. Do not try to make it a piece of art because you'll just tighten up and become really precious. I have colleagues, arty colleagues, who are amazing at drawing with ink, with pen, with pencil, and their sketchbooks are, to me, dedicated pieces of artwork. They don't write in there, they might date it and name it, but that is a piece of art. This is a different beast altogether. This is where everything and anything goes. And if you're like me, you need to have a place to get this stuff that's in your head out. You need to register it somewhere. The definition of sketch is, in the dictionary, a quick rough drawing. Any brief outline, it's to make a brief description. You might have unfinished pages and I can go back a, a year back and I love finding some unfinished pages that I can work on. A friend recently referred to my sketchbook as my scrapbook and I will happily take the definition of scrap um, which is a small piece of something larger. So in my head what I have in my sketch slash scrap slash art journal is a small piece of the bigger picture of my art, of my finished paintings. Whatever we call it, it works. I have identified patterns. Sometimes, and I'll show you, it's all writing. Sometimes it's all painting. And sometimes there's a nice balance. I don't worry about it. I just let it be what it wants to be. So here then, this is January 22 last year, but I got a couple of hours in the cabin. Two small paintings have gone a little bit wayward. I have to remember not to panic. I'm loving the Wedgwood blue, and I have to remember to establish the parts of the painting that I like. So I'm printing the problems out now. I printed, and then this gives me the chance to identify what I don't like, what I want to go back tomorrow or the next day and change up. That that became, I've got in February, so about a month later, I'm still working. I've obviously put it, got to a point and then left it alone. And then, then it became something much cleaner. And this was the finished, this was part of the finished painting that I has now sold, that sold in June or July. here so a big a big motif here this was something I had in the end I put on a t-shirt I was working on a series of three paintings here two of those no all of those all of those have sold the Mad Hatter working on it here and then sometime later I got to here it does relate to bigger work I'm hoping to bring to conclusion to finish and hopefully to sell and then other times this is a page 
it bears no relation to anything I was working on. It's literally just a sketchbook page to play. So more recently then, if we take snake plant, pages of painting, and you will find the best way of working with your book. I'm having another go with the gel plate and mixing the colours actually on the plate. With, I'm thinking about wallpaper. I've been in the sketchbook and I'm just thinking about wallpaper as a ground, as a background. I cut quite badly, it was quite tricky, on a very flimsy piece of plastic. I cut these shapes and I'm not, I'm not over the, I'm not overwhelmed by that attempt at a template. So that's something that I'll definitely be trying to do again. As usual, I'm too impatient to let the paper, the paper dry. I've really got to get better at that. However, that the idea of making your own stencil is very appealing. I've had a look at some stencils that you can buy, but I'd much rather, I think, I'd much rather make my own. I attempt, in a minute, you'll see, to, again, I just want to, I want to draw myself. So I use the roller, because it's literally what I've got to hand, in my hand, and I'm much happier with these kind of organic shapes that go down and that I pull off. I felt happier with that. I've watched lots of videos and they're all really helpful. But I think the only way to learn with this gel plate is by actually playing with it and, and, and having a go with it myself, rather than trying to watch a tutorial. I want to find my own purpose, if you like. I, I completely get that you can make so many really, really good papers for collage. And I have no doubt that I will get there. I will find what it is I'm looking for. And at this stage, I'm still not really sure what it is that I'm looking for. I worry that I'm still trying to get some end result before I've even begun and that I want it to be instantly be something as opposed to collage material. So I'm still a, such a beginner um, and that doesn't bother me. I just need to give it time, keep playing, keep experimenting. I have, in fact, as I'm sitting here and doing a voiceover on this little clip, I need to dash up to the cabin and see if I can find a roll of rice paper that I know I have in there and so many of you suggested I have a go with. More mark making here. I just, all I want to do is make marks in the paint. So I'm having another go, trying to keep going. I, I have a suspicion that I'll be doing more of that I clearly like those, I like those shapes. But I've just made a complete mess because I never let anything, I'm too impatient to let anything dry.
I'm just working intuitively. I don't really, no, no I definitely do not have a plan. pen does lift, the acrylic pens do lift quite nicely. So really in conclusion here I think I like, I'm happiest trying to draw onto the plate or into the wet paint on the plate with a tool. There's one thing I've forgotten, when, when do you sketchbook? You need to carve out time for sketchbook. Some people like to sketchbook before they begin to engage with their art. They use it in a, as a form of warm up. If you stay loose in your sketchbook, you'll keep that looseness as you move into the painting. Sometimes I do do that, but I find, and for a long time now, I think it's fair to say, I sketchbook in the evening on the sofa studio. We have got to the most silly point now where my husband gesticulates with his hand and his arm, <laughs> the designatory line that I'm not allowed to encroach my half share of the sofa because I, I've even now got a little tray with supplies that I that is pushed against the arm, so I'm sort of squeezed in. However, it's just the best time for me to reflect on whatever practice it is that I've done during the day. Yeah. So for me, I think it's about assessing. It's a constant, an ongoing assessment of where I am. Where I am, what I'm excited about, what I don't want to do again, what was a disaster, what was good. You get the picture. Well, you will, I'm sure, discover the best time for you. I really, really look forward to my sketchbook. I've actually Actually, I've got I'm gonna pause here because I wrote we were talking about it at breakfast yesterday and I said out I said something out loud as you do and oh my god I suddenly said I've got to write that down I've got to write that down bear with me my notes I wrote that it's no longer a question of can I do it it's a case of I can't not do it. I can't stop now. I absolutely love it. And I just know that if you engage with it, if you give it a bit of time, you will get so much, you will get so much from it. Creativity is its own reward. How true that is. I'm going to end here this week. If there's anything more I can say or that I haven't touched on, let me know. Let me know your how and why and when and where. It's a really good thing to share because I think it's such a helpful tool. It's your part of your big old art kit. Okay, have a lovely, lovely week. Thank you to everyone for subscribing and liking and I will see you next time. Next time, I am beyond excited. I can't put it into words to share with you something somewhere and the most beautiful art I've seen in a long time. So that's coming up very shortly. Have a lovely week and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.